at Thunder Mesa Studio where this week I am building a log cabin from scratch. Just the way our pioneer forefathers did. No, not exactly. Now, as usual, the first step was to build a mock-up to make sure that everything would fit and everything was scaled right for the spot that I wanted on the layout, which is over here in Circle D Ranch. So here's the mock-up that I made out of foam core and uh, cardstock. And the footprint is four by six inches, which in O scale comes out to 16 by 24 feet. So a pretty small cabin, but it's gonna fit right there. One of the first things I've done is to create a, uh, a foundation for the model out of one quarter inch thick MDF. Now of course an O scale quarter inch is one foot. Now for the front part of this, which is going to be under the front porch, I want that to look like wood. So I'm going to carve this right here and make these look like they're uh, 12 by 12 timbers under here. Okay, when this is all stained and everything, this will look like 12 by 12 timbers underneath the porch. Just give it a little faux wood grain. Just the edge of the razor saw. And now for this part that's under the building itself, I'm going to use a tiny little burr bit in my Dremel, and I'm going to just carve some stone shapes into the side here. Uh, I'm going to freehand it because I've done this quite a lot um, that you might want to draw on here and use some photos for reference for what that kind of stone foundation is going to look like. Okay, that should give you some idea. And before I start on the, uh, the walls, I kind of have to figure out the, uh, the doors and windows, or, the, or at least the windows. And what I decided I'm going to use are these uh, Grantline masonry windows, but I'm not going to use them as they are because they're way too big for a structure like this. These are like factory windows. So I'm going to cut them down and build frames for them. Some 4x6 and some 2x4 to frame the outsides. Okay, we've got our three windows, and I'm now going to uh, now I'm going to get a coat of primer on these while I start on the walls. I think yes, let's do that. Since the interior of my model wasn't going to be visible. I decided to simplify construction by building it over an inner box made from black foam core. Okay, I found some nice uh, 16th 16, 16 inch thick scribed basswood to use for the door and I'm going to put a little detail here in it that I've seen in a lot of old cabins this cross right here and that's not necessarily because they were religious I mean they probably were but the cross was a rifle port back and forth and up and down so I'm going to uh, carve that into the door here well I'm going to drill it Start the holes here. Twist drill. The door was finished and stained, 
then assembled right on the foam core inner wall with scale 4x6 timbers for the frame. Now this is where things get interesting. Now I'm going to take a piece of uh, gold foam, gold urethane foam, this is called balsa foam, and I'm going to carve a chimney out of it. This stuff is really easy to carve. Uh, this is the harder density, 10 pound density, I think it's uh, balsa foam 2. Anyway, I'm going to lay it out on here and cut out the shape and then carve it so it looks like a random stone chimney. And we need to put that on the side of the building before we put the logs on. See what I'm saying? Okay, well there's our balsa foam fireplace chimney. You probably noticed that uh, <laughs> this process creates a lot of dust. So one of the first things you want to do when you finish your carving is uh, paint it uh, with acrylics and that will seal it and uh, help keep the dust down. And I'm just mixed up a kind of a warm dark gray here which will act as a, an undercoat for everything else that's to come. Okay, this is what it looks like after uh, put that base coat of gray on there and a little uh, dry brush with some unbleached titanium, which is one of my favorite colors for scenery and structures. Stuff right here, unbleached titanium, which is actually just a really, really light tan. Just dry brushing this on here, just hitting the tops of the stones. And now I'll go back and pick out some individual stones with some different shades of gray and grayish tan. There we go. That's starting to look like something. Well, it's been a minute or two. It's actually the next day. And now it's time to start putting some logs into our log cabin. Uh, one thing I've noticed uh, in a lot of early log cabins is that <laughs> they were in a hurry to build them. And uh, they usually didn't bother getting the bark off of the logs. So you would see a lot of logs with kind of bark hanging half on and half off on these old cabins with the weathered wood underneath. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. There is no fast way <laughs> to do this. It's a multi-step process. And I'm going to show you each one of the steps. And then I'll show you how the whole thing goes together. Each log pretty much has to be sculpted and finished before it goes onto the structure. Okay. So um, I'm going to take you through each of the steps. Let's, uh, let's figure it out. Step one, we cut our dowels to length, which will become our logs. Now I want them to be a little bit longer than the structure so that they hang over the edges. This is six inches wide. I'm gonna make them six and a half. Step two, we have to scribe some grain into our logs here. And I'm going to use a razor saw to do that. Okay, step three, we're going to notch the logs. Because on log cabins like this, what you basically have at the joints, you have half lap joints. Where one log lays right over the other in a half lap joint. Just like Lincoln logs. So. I created a little jig to make this easier. Just kind of a little uh, miter box here that only allows me to cut halfway through the log. So a scale six inches down. And once I've cut two slots in there, I can go back and carve out that notch. A little chisel blade is a handy thing to have for this. 
There we go. Now for step four, we need to dress the ends to make these look like they were cut with an ax. That's pretty easy. Just take a hobby knife and randomly go around and slice off parts of the end of the board there, or the dowel. Now for step five, we need to stain this log. Give it an old weathered look. So I've got a, a stain mixed up here, which is um, India ink and rubbing alcohol which I always keep around, and we stain it. Now step six is where we add the bark to the log. And for that, I'm gonna use an acrylic modeling paste. And what I'm using is Crescent Creek Models Scale Stucco. And I've already gotten some out and I've mixed it. It mixes very well with acrylic paint. So I've mixed a dirty, dark, red, blackish, grayish brown <laughs> uh, for the bark. And I'm going to stipple it on here to represent patches of bark that are still clinging to the tree. Now we let that dry. Now step uh, seven, I think we're on, is uh, we dry brush a little highlight color on here, and I'm using a red or brown oxide. Just a dry brush and just hit the high spots of this texture. Okay, now that log is about ready to install. Now the first course is easy. Now to represent chinking between the logs, I've mixed up some of this uh, scale stucco with some unbleached titanium. I've tinted it, sort of a limestone color, and loaded it into a syringe. And I'm going to use it just like glue to glue the, the uh, remaining courses of logs on all the way up. And when it's in there, squeezes out between the logs and it looks like that. Well, at this point, the log courses are now up to the base of the windows, so I can start putting those in. Um, I've already done one, so I could uh, figure it out ahead of time and you wouldn't have to go through that with me. Uh, but now I'll show you exactly how I did it. And once again, it's a multi-step process. And so we have two more, two more windows to do. The first thing is I've taken the window frames that we've already built and put a kind of a gray, gray-brown wash over the top <clears throat> to make them blend in better with the stained wood on the model. And the next thing is to glaze the windows. And to do that, I'm just using some clear acrylic. I believe this is out of a cheap picture frame that I got at Walmart. I'm a 0.76 thick clear acrylic. And I've already cut that to size to fit right down inside the uh, window frames there. And I'm just going to use a couple of tiny little dabs of CA to uh, hold that in place. Okay, now what I'm trying to simulate here is the look of old rippled glass, like you see in a lot of old buildings <clears throat> before glass was uh, mass produced. Um, and I've discovered a cool way to do that using 
Woodland Scenics Realistic Water. Now, ironically enough, I do not really use this stuff for water, but I do use it for this. And I'm just going to paint it on the inside back of the glazing. And what you want, you want streaks in it. Because that's what's going to create that rippled look. All right. Next, we're going to add curtains to the inside of our windows. And for that, I'm going to use crepe paper. Good old party crepe paper, and we don't need very much. Just a little square here. Now to frame the windows into the opening, I'm just going to use some scale 4x8s, which will bring them out even with the edge of these logs here, so they're not recessed back in there. And that's what that looks like. I'll do the other the third window, and uh, then I can finish doing the logs the rest of the way up the wall. say those walls are done for now. I'll go back later and I'll touch up and highlight and dry brush some more detail into the bark and things like that. Blend in the grout here and there or the, the chinking between the logs. But the last thing I'm going to do today is uh, put in the porch. These uh, 1 by 12 planks straight across there like that. Well, here's where we're at so far, and now I think maybe it's time to start thinking about a roof. Now, since there's going to be uh, lighting inside the cabin and uh, possibly other electronics, I want to make the roof removable, and I think I'm going to make it at a good old illustration board. This is a Crescent Cold Press illustration board. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Has a nice ivory surface to it, which takes color well. And uh, I'm going to cut out the pieces. Well, I'm going to measure and then cut out the pieces for the roof. And uh, we'll see what that looks like. Well, you may have noticed I uh, built a bit of a sag into the roof here. Uh, but right now, I'm going to paint the underside of the eaves that will be visible on the illustration board, just using watercolors, mixing out my favorite uh, cobalt blue and burnt sienna. Look how well that matches the gray with the stain there. Now, while, while I wait for this glue to dry, I can do a little bit of engineering on the front porch here. Figure that out. I detailed and painted the underside of the porch roof with my watercolor mixture, then finished it up with some 4x6 rafters glued on two foot centers. Uh, 
Uh, well, things are going pretty good. I've got the roof, the removable roof, uh, pretty much finished other than shingles. I've added some 4x6 trim to the gable ends there, and that's a really nice fit down in there like that. Very nice. Now for the porch, the next thing I would need to do is build the support structure, which I'm gonna put in underneath there. I've also made some shutters for the windows. See those? Put those on. But uh, first I need to build the support structure for the porch. Okay, I'm really liking the way this is looking, except for one thing. The chimney needs to be a couple of feet taller. So I'm going to carve a piece, paint it, and put it on there to make the chimney a little taller. Fortunately, it's not that hard to do. It's just a little time consuming. Well, while I'm working on the chimney, I think I'll go ahead and add another level of detail. I'm going to use some spackling compound and press it into the joints here to really bring out the look of the grout and also to blend it in with the log wall here a little bit. Then it was time to start shingling the roof. I used laser cut real cedar peel and stick shingles from Crescent Creek Models, staining them with an airbrush and the same India ink and alcohol mixture used on the rest of the structure. On the main roof section, I dipped each course of shingles a little bit lower as I worked my way up to match the built-in sag in the roof. There's the roof. All done. The only problem is it looks way too new for a cabin of this vintage, a, a, a pioneer cabin from the 1860s. I had some copper flashing up here around the, the chimney, which also looks way too new. So now I'm going to weather everything. I'm going to I'm going to dry brush some grays onto these shingles. I'm going to put some chalks on here and kind of just make it all look a little bit older and more worn out. Well, it's day five. I think it's time to finish this up by uh, completing the foundation, adding some interior lighting and some final details. Okay, for the lighting, I've got a uh, five millimeter um, amber flickering LED, which I'm going to put over in the corner here, so it'll look like the fireplace is uh, is lit in here. And wired up to that, I've already got a uh, small yellow flickering LED, uh, not non flickering LED, to represent kerosene lamp, uh, kerosene lantern. So I'm going to install these in the uh, in the structure now the best I can, and we'll see how that looks. I've already um, gone ahead and uh, put the resistors on here. The resistor always goes on the positive lead, and on all my wiring for all my structures, the positive lead is red. Uh, LEDs are um, polarity specific, so you have to keep track of 
which one is positive and which one is negative. So red is positive, black is negative, and we'll uh, do our best to get this installed now. All right, we've got the lighting installed, and I've painted up a few little details here. La mother and baby figure. This is from Knuckle Duster Miniatures. They've got some beautiful, uh, beautifully sculpted 19th century figures. Oops, just want to stand up. And a little barrel, of course, and a ubiquitous broom. And now I'm going to install those on the porch. And then we can take the whole model over and see how it looks on the layout. So humble, no place like home. Well, I think this one's done, amigos. Pretty happy with the way it turned out. Thanks for following along. I'll see you next time. Adios for now.